Oh, I love that. Um, that sets the tone for our show. Uh, that video was created by Songs for World Peace, which is a volunteer initiative started in 2020 by musicians across the globe 
to promote peace through the power of music. And it's, you know, I use that to open the show for a couple of reasons. First, Music to Life has started to collaborate with Songs for World Peace. It's our first international partnership. And their work might be of interest to the folks tuning in today. So make sure you check them out at songsforworldpeace.org. So I'm excited to be with you today. This is um, Liz Stuckey Sunday, Executive Director of Music to Life. And as some of you know, Music to Life is a U.S.-based nonprofit founded by me and my dad, Noel Paul Stuckey of the folk trio Peter, Paul, and Mary, to support the work of musician change agents in communities around the country. And for today's show, we have another global collaboration happening with the Meridian International Center, which is a national program agency for the U.S. Department of State and their International Visitor Leadership Program. There's a mouthful. We are so glad to have the chance to produce this show with them today. And we're gonna travel the world to meet artists from North America, Texas and Canada, um, from Zimbabwe, Indonesia. Um, and just a heads up, this is such an entertaining and rich exchange. Plus we'll be adding musical encores at the end. So all of this I'm thinking is going to push the show to probably 75 minutes. So whether you can stay with us now to watch it all live or catch a replay, you are in for a serious treat. So today's show also has support from you all, our amazing viewers. You're watching us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitch, and your continued support helps us produce these amazing artist showcases. So I wanna thank you for your donations and tips. Please give generously. Um, and now let's get to know this amazing program um, that we're collaborating with today through the eyes of a participant. We're going to call to the stage our bear, a Kosovar journalist who's going to tell us more. Hello, our bear. Take it away. Thank you so much, Liz. I have the honor of welcoming you on behalf of this delegation of extraordinary, hardworking, and impactful individuals part of the IVLP program uh, this year called A Global Moment in Time, Reflections on Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Accessibility. Uh, IVLP, the International Visitors Leadership Program, is the US Department of State's premier professional exchange program through short-term visits to the United States, Current and emerging foreign leaders in a variety of fields experience this country firsthand and we cultivate lasting relationships with our American uh, counterparts. We are yet to visit the US, so everybody here is really looking forward to that. Uh, my name is Arber Selmoni. I come from Kosovo. I'm a poet, I'm an artist, I'm a freelance journalist, I'm a traveler of the, traveler of the world, always in search of exploring different cultures and traditions. What's interesting is that there's so many of us here. We are 86 participants this year, coming from 61 different countries and across 18 time zones. So some of us are sleeping, some of us are awake all around the world today. We have each been recognized and selected by the American embassies and consulates in our respective countries to participate in this IVLP this year, now in its 82nd year. Uh, we have here CEOs, we have uh, NGO representatives, we have artists, parents, athletes, uh, we have hobbies, writers, poets, uh, human rights defenders, and of course we have the best musicians, the ones that you're gonna uh, listen to tonight. We are all united in uh, our desire to explore the diverse communities and democratic values of the US, while of course learning about civil rights and the ubiquity of unconscious privilege. I am very happy that I was given uh, this chance tonight to open this show and I would love for you to join us tonight. So I'm gonna uh, now uh, give floor to Liz again. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Really glad that you could be here. Yay, and, and can I just say, for all the time zones we're crossing here, everybody just looks amazing. I'm sorry, whether it's one in That's the morning, true. you got That's somebody coming true. here at midnight, it's, it's fantastic. So anyway, thank you for being here. Let's get on with music and stories. Um, and I'm going to start with Kamika. We're gonna to head to Dallas, Texas. Actually, we're, we're doing local first, so hello, hello. Um, wonderful to, uh, 
I just love being with you. Just love basking in your presence. So I'm going to do a quick um, intro for you and you get to stay here and, and kind of smile and listen and glow because there's just so much to tell about you. Um, Kamika is a gifted musical storyteller, business and social entrepreneur, and a board certified music therapist. Her appearances have included the Kennedy Center's Art Across America series. That was fun. Um, Carnegie Hall and the US Open. She's been featured on various television networks and has graced the TEDx stage with her talk, The Power of Song. And of course, Music to Life, we have had the good fortune um, to work with her through Music to Life's Accelerator program, where we helped her in her journey to create Musically Me, a musical self-empowerment program for youth of color. And we're going to get back to that. Um, but first, um, Kamika, do you want to um, go ahead and introduce your first song, Black Excellence? Yes. Thank you so much, Liz. So Black Excellence is a response to anti-Blackness in the U.S. And it was written at a time um, in 2020 where I was experiencing grief, the collective grief um, after the murder of George Floyd. And that was on top of the murder of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery. So it's a song of resistance and something that's about lifting up Black as beautiful and brilliant in spite of a lot of messages and systems of oppression that want to speak otherwise. So hope you all uh, enjoy and uh, take away something special from Black Excellence. Thank you. I am a black woman. I am a healer. I am powerful in a world that regularly seeks to tell me otherwise. I am persistent, but also in need of rest. We are at times traumatized into submission and conditioned to conform. So black excellence is resistance to racism, sexism, to anti-blackness. Black excellence includes self-care, community care. And the words of black excellence are my truth and your truth too if it applies to you, whether in the present or an affirmation for the future. Salah. I love the skin I'm in. No matter what you say, it's beautiful black skin. It wasn't always easy for me to feel this way. I have to make a choice every day. No matter what you say, no matter what you try, I will not disguise. I will not compromise. Black brilliance, heaven says, black excellence. The journey of my life Through all the heartache And the trauma of these times I had to look within I had to look above I had to heal myself I had to learn I love the way I am And that I exude Black excellence oh, oh, oh. Black excellence ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, oh, oh. Tear me down. 
down. No, no, because no. I'm on my way. Yeah, unto higher heights, unto a brighter day. And I lift as I rise, which I know for ways black excellence, black excellence. excellence. We are excellent. You are excellent just as you are. Our melanin, who we are, how we are, our story. Young one, you are excellent. You are young, gifted, and black. The elders, we thank you for your wisdom. One love, y'all. My name is Kamika King. It's been a blessing to be in front of y'all today. Hope you enjoy. Much love. <laughs> Take care. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> what a treasure. Really appreciate that. All right. We're going to come back. We're going to hear more about your work. Thank you for being with us, Kamika. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That was shot by Visions by Ken um, at the Energy Gardens Plant Lounge, Black-owned business. And it was for South Dallas Cultural Center's Music Lounge, which their moniker is Black Culture Celebrated. So I wanted to give a shout out to those folks. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. No, thank you. Really credit where credit is due. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Excellent. Okay. So we are going to move on to um, Indonesia, Tika. We welcome you. Hello. Oh, you might be muted. Are you muted? Oh, okay. Sorry. There you are. That's okay. <laughs> You're back. Hello. Hello. So hello. I'm going to do a quick. I'm I'm going to do a quick intro for you as well. Um, so Tika is a vocalist, songwriter, actress, and visual artist. Tika's defiant lyrics touch on issues from gender justice, sexuality labor movement to music to media literacy literacy sorry um that's a lot it's a lot of issues that you are tackling and your band tika and the dissidents have earned acclaim for music fans as well as the media she's put her music into practice founding the bersama project and she might correct me on that did i get that that's, that's absolutely correct excellent um, which is a foundation aimed to promote gender equality through creative intervention. Tika was also named Indonesia's Breakthrough Woman by Tempo Magazine. And finally, she runs, you're going to need to help me pronounce the eatery. Ruang Selatan. Rua, say it again. Ruang Selatan. Ruang Selatan, an eatery and curated community space in South Jakarta that's all about inclusivity, safety, and creativity. Oh. All right, we're going to learn more about that when we circle back. But for now, do you want to go ahead and introduce um, Unlearn the Fight? And I'm sorry, we could. this is a beautiful video, you guys, and it's like seven minutes of amazing. <laughs> it is so a long time. We had to cut it down. <laughs> so, so, but go ahead That's and give, okay. us, give, us the, give us the intro. Yeah. Okay. So the, initially, the title of the song was Unlearn the Fight, and then we decided to change it to Unlearn the Hate because fighting is good, but hating is not. Um, this is a response to kind of the rise of intolerance that's, uh, that we are experiencing in Indonesia of late. Um, my country is really amazing. It's a really vibrant country. It has really uh, rich cultural heritage. And we are kind of unique in the way that, you know, we kind of assimilate our indigenous culture with uh, Islam, which is the religion of the majority of Indonesians, which is my religion. And we're in the month of Ramadan right now. We're, we're fasting. But in the last uh, decade or so, I think we're also seeing like a rapid rise in conservatism and intolerance. And um, it's it's been quite concerning to uh, me as an artist. So this song is written in response to that sort of a defiance and the celebration of diversity. 
um, so that we we remember uh, that that in our roots, in our indigenous roots, we come from many. So please enjoy and learn to hate. You want to see that whole piece at some point you really do so <laughs> it gets interesting after that part uh, yeah, no, it's, well, what i love i think i said this to you before it's this it's every part of you is this multifaceted artist because it's this ballad beginning that starts to grow and then you super rock out in the end which by the yeah. way but we will see you at the end with our encores you totally rock out with that with that last piece that we're going to show everybody so all sides of you but but i'm so I'm looking forward to circling back. We will talk about your projects a little later. See you later. Thank you. Thanks for being here. All right, we're off to Zimbabwe. Vera, are you with us? Hello, hello, Vera. Uh-oh. Vera, can you hear us? Hmm. Well, all right. The, here's the good news about Vera. Her video actually has an intro built in to the song that you're going to hear. So let me let me do a um, let me do Vera's intro. Um, we'll go into the song, and hopefully by the towards the end of the show, we will get to see her back live. So Vera 
is a funky jazz vocalist and guitarist from Zimbabwe. She notes that with a government that is notorious for using creatives to push their political agenda, most creatives in Zimbabwe really struggle to pursue careers as nonpartisan content creators. And so as a proud activist and philanthropist, Vera recently founded a creative hub in, I was gonna ask her for the pronunciation, I believe it's Harare, Zimbabwe, called the Incubator ZW that inspires and motivates artists to reach their full potential. So I can't wait, we will keep our fingers crossed, we can get her back to talk more about that um, in our group conversation. For now, enjoy Vera's song, Freedom. Hello everybody, my name is Vera and I am here all the way in Zimbabwe <laughs> and I'm gonna give you two songs. Um, the first song is entitled Freedom and it's a song dedicated to all of the people who've wrongfully been arrested, all of the activists in Zimbabwe that are still in jail and haven't seen their day in court and um, to all of the refugees everywhere in the world and just praying that one day you get the freedom that you deserve. Oh, 
We got you back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay. Good. So did you, I, I wanted to give you a chance. Is there anything else you wanted to add to, to that piece the, to introduce that, to post introduce it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the song was basically a song I wrote years ago. And um, I think it still reigns true today as it did when I first wrote it, that there's just, Unfortunately, there's still so much injustice that's happening, especially um, looking at the Zimbabwean context where despite the fact that we have new leadership, um, there's still a lot of um, suppression of young people, of um, you know, activists, of um, marginalized communities. And at the end of the day, all people really want um, anywhere in the world is like, they just want to be free. They want to be able to be themselves and just be able to be in a space where they're comfortable with who they are. Yeah. Well, I am really looking forward. We're going to hear a little bit more about that space. And did I, did I get Harare correct? Is that how you? Yes, how you, you did. Okay. Yes, you did. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll, so we'll circle back um, again. Thank okay. you so much for being, for, for being with us. So. Anytime. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to our fourth artist, Benny, from Toronto. Am I right about that? It is Toronto. Right? That's right. You're back with us again. We, I know we've had you on other shows, but Benny, it's so good to have you here. So I have, um, I have a little intro for you, too. Uh, Benny arrived in Canada as a child with his parents, who were political refugees fleeing Bogota, Colombia after receiving threats for their human rights activism. And today, Benny is a Juno-nominated multi-instrumentalist producer, spoken word poet, arts educator, and community worker. He's also, which I think I didn't know, or maybe I knew, a PhD candidate in musicology and ethnomusicology, specializing in Colombian traditional music and hip hop culture. Woo! Um, Benny has won wide recognition for his community-based work. He's the music director of several community projects and co-leads the Wheel It Studios mobile project, which provides access to, record, to recording equipment and mentorship for aspiring musicians across different neighborhoods, which again, we will hear more about, which I'm excited to do. Um, and in the short term, you're going to introduce the next video, which is um, One Dish, One Spoon. Yes, thank you. So One Dish it celebrates the dish with one spoon traditional territory where Toronto is in, also known as Takaranto. That's the original Mohawk name. And it features Malaika Awairi, Nimki Asawamik, Raven Kanatakta, who are indigenous artists representing Turtle Island. And as you know, Canada has a, a terrible legacy of mistreating indigenous communities uh, through missing indigenous um, women, um, through pipelines, uh, lack of drinking water in, or, or drinkable water in many communities, and most recently, um, the discovery of thousands of unmarked graves uh, through the residential school system. So this song um, touches on some of the, these issues, uh, but it's a... It's, uh, to celebrate these treaties, the fact that it's important for us to know treaties like the Dish with One Spoon Treaty that was established by the Anishinaabe and the Iroquois um, to, to share the land, to pass on, um, you know, those teachings of, of sharing and healing. And really, uh, healing starts when we begin to realize our relationship with the land. Our healing is directly connected to the healing of the land. So the song says, there never could be world peace if all the war on the soil does not cease, but instead we're quick to cock it and squeeze. Yes, the field is the dish we must peacefully shield. If we damage the whole field, it won't yield herbs that heal. One dish. One dish, one spoon, I'ma try to explain it A piece back so sacred, so share it, like it, know it's celebrated One dish is the land where people 
people are expected to limit what they waste Hoarding war is not accepted with, with a request to have no knives on the dish Cause it's for sharing And use one spoon so there's no blood shedding This treaty territory circles land across Great Lakes On Turtle Island it's a long distance to undertake It includes my city known as T.6 or Tarano Originally a Mohawk word pronounced as Harato Those streets I walk all day It's highs and lows they fill my soul With actual stories that I'll gladly share with you all Sharing the land has took place long before the great law of peace The constitution of the Iroquois confederacy One dish, one spoon originally became a treaty Between the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee specifically Later even western nations joined to discuss the peace And got the blessing in Onondaga to squash the beef That's why today we must respect the first constituents And keep the dish clean for our children and new immigrants in peace Oswego Tikarando deep the soles of my feet where the trees stand in the water so my roots run deep we don't sleep on this beaded visual honoring life of ceremony our spoken rituals treaties need treatment June Gano medicine flow purge colonial scourge and pull up the windigo the foundation of a treaty's indigenous sovereignty protection of lands and waters sustain seven genet legacies from land to hand to dish our covenants and home Lands were vanquished more than 500 years. Mr. Sinister, Prime Minister, and your henchmen, the RCMP, they want us all murdered and missing eventually. Ongwe Ongwe say, Not today, colonizer. We got our Thunderbirds and the Eighth Fire. Reconciliation, dead settler state expired. Our clan mothers told you there is no justice on stolen land. So put the dish back in the matriarch's hands. could be world peace if all the war on the soil does not cease but instead we're quick to cock and squeeze yes the field is the dish we must peacefully shield if we damage the whole field it won't yield herbs that heal let's never forget the elements of hip-hop follow treaties that history repeats itself our story isn't linear it's time to mend the bond between the new school and the old and so the story of a new tradition will be told systemic forces tell us to dig more oil and gold but indigenous world View tells us to dig no more Just analyze, look for the truth You shouldn't ignore your heart The exploitation of our mother was wrong from the start Eyes of our great-grandchildren look up at us from the earth So let's walk carefully, don't stop on the things they deserve Remember that or write it down, our elders never die As long as their stories live on and their dreams stay alive So when you're standing on the streets like each Badina In downtown Toronto, make sure you know which beast treaty you with All these land acknowledgements become true Reveal that we don't make learning where we stand a daily ritual. Digging them roots on guitar. Okay, let's get everybody up here. Let's bring everybody to the stage. Benny, that was fantastic. Holy cow. Thank you. That was just, that was amazing. That was like a, a history lesson just baked into this unbelievable piece of creative work. Um, oh dear, do we lose Vera again? Vera. Oh, oh no, there she is. 
She's there. Wait, I see her backstage. Why don't I see her? Huh. Okay. I think she's here I'm just here. with no video. Oh, just with no video. Okay, got it. All right. Well, we'll let her work on that. We, we at least we got a few moments of her on video, which was great. Okay. Hi, everybody. How are we doing? Hello. 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 Hi. That was I amazing. Have to say this, this almost feels like a festival. Like I, I so wish we could take the entire afternoon and just kind of jam together and <laughs> together. Um, but for now, I really, you know, something about, so we've established the incredible talent that's on this stage right now. Um, and, and where I want to go and where I'm really curious about, it. of course, this is, you know, something that's near and dear to music to life's heart because we support musicians that are sort of taking their talent into their communities and kind of manifesting that talent in some tangible ways. Oh, there she is. There's her face. Hi, Vera. Um, and sort of manifesting that talent in, in projects and programs. And we, we sort of, we started to introduce that um, with each of you. And I know you each have these, these projects. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about those projects. And, you know, as part of it, obviously you're doing your projects in the communities where you live. And so there are unique kind of challenges and successes and maybe just a challenge or a success that has sort of reared its head as you've tried to implement and, and make these, you know, these projects real is what I would, what I would, ask you to share. So I don't have a particular order, but I feel like because we have Vera right now on the screen, I want to sort of let her, if you're okay with that, Vera, you want to jump in and, and, ta and tackle this first? Tell us a little bit about the Incubator CW and, and yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, I guess with my music, one of the main positive outcomes from that is that I managed to start my own um, creative hub, which is basically a platform for like young creatives um, who don't normally get the opportunity to meet other people and create new content to kind of um, get that platform to do that, to write about whatever they want to write about, to sing about whatever they want to sing about, to perform whatever they want to perform and to speak truth to their existence. I think the one um, disadvantage about being a creative, being a musician, being an artist who speaks about, um, who tries to use art to speak truth to power is that, um, like in, like I mentioned earlier, that in Zimbabwe, um, we have um, a very polarized, very controlled state media. Um, they don't really like it when we, <laughs> when we talk about what's happening on the ground. They don't like it when young people speak out for themselves. And then that makes it a bit harder for it to be a bit profitable. Sometimes it also could result in like you being like targeted as an artist. Um, and we've seen that a lot, like seen a lot of artists in Zimbabwe being arrested for, um, you know, them using their creativity to just speak about what's happening on the ground. But I think what just makes it really exciting for me, just one other success is um, last year we had a journalist who then, um, he just wrote a song. He was being like, just trying to be young and funky. And he sang a song about how there's so much corruption in the country. And a bunch of other young people then did like covers of that song. And I also was like in my pajamas, I was like, I have to, you know, join in on this because I thought it was so beautiful that like young people were finding me for speaking out. And um, that was also just something that was just really beautiful that came out of just um, using music to speak to, to our experiences and trying to get, um, you know, our leadership holding them accountable for some of the things that they're doing badly and some of the things that they need to understand that young people are going through in our country. That's excellent. That's excellent. And do you have support for your incubator? Are you do, are you getting funding from somewhere, or how does that? Are you financing that yourself? How does that? How does that happen? Um, <laughs> so it, it's really hectic. Um, how it started is we got funding from the British Council um, when we first started, and then um, when COVID happened, like we had no funding, but we really just believed in continuing to create content and like just getting as many young people to just keep working. So we then just went onto our Instagram and we're like, listen, whoever's interested to just do Instagram live performances or just to help us to coordinate young people to just collaborate and create pieces, we're willing to do that. And then um, earlier this year, we got some funding from the US Embassy to just continue some of the work we're doing because we also have a podcast um, where we just um, give young people a space to speak, so yeah. That's excellent, that's great. Great. Anybody want to want to jump in next? Anybody? Tika, I'll just pick on you because I'm 
yeah going around the circle yeah <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead yeah i think i resonate a lot with what vera was saying about uh her experience in zimbabwe which has its uh, similarities to what we experience here in Indonesia as artists as well with government intervention and threats and persecutions and all of that, that can be very uh, challenging too. But in a way, I realized that my entrance to social political issues in the beginning of my teenage years was from music. So I know how powerful it is in opening up minds and being sort of the gateway for us to learn about what's really going on outside of you know, what was being fed to us through state media, which is always makes it seem like everything was okay, especially like back when I was growing up where it was sort of a dictatorship. Um, but also, um, so I, I, I felt that I knew I had to do this uh, and it's my calling to make my music sort of the platform for uh, all of these political stuff that aren't in the news. But also on top of that, um, the persecution, the threats, sometimes death threats, you know, just for talking about our own bodies in my song, Tubuhku Otoritasku, you get all kinds of reactions like that. But also on top of that, there's, um, there's a lot of political musicians in Indonesia who are mostly male, but when you're a woman, you get all that same intimidation and misogyny on top of that. Um, the sexism, the, um, the the threats concerning your body and all of that. So I feel that that just kind of fuels me to move forward even more. Um, and, and the response that I have gotten have been really amazing, especially for one of my songs called Tubuku Autoritasku, My Body, My Authority. Um, I didn't know that it was going to resonate so much with the women and girls in Indonesia who has probably... Um, the song came out a long time ago in 2013, but back then there was kind of like, it started a movement and, and I felt very glad that, you know, cause when one person speaks out, it's like a light that everybody else sees and, you know, they come out of the dark and also share their own experiences of having experienced what I experienced too. So that has been a really amazing journey through music. Well, and it's and it sounds like so. There's the on the one hand, there's the the power of your music, and it sounds like the way your music is kind of spreading through the community. And then you've created these programs to kind of move that, yeah, you know, move your your music, but also importantly, kind of the 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 um, what is it? Sort of the the meaning behind your music in a very tangible way into the community. So yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about that safe space or the Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the foundation, yeah. Yeah, so the foundation was created as like a support system for other artists who wants to uh, sort of connect and create together um, or, or increase their capacity in issues like gender, uh, which is kind of still a taboo to be talked about in, in certain communities in Indonesia. So that, that's uh, what Brasal Project is about. That's why we're calling it a creative intervention. Uh, for gender equality, for sexual diversity, especially for sexual diversity, because um, there's such a pushback uh, and, and, and such a threat for people to talk about sexual orientation and such, where we, we really need that safe physical space to be able to even hold events to talk about these things. So uh, we created Ruang Selatan, sort of like, um, you, you talked about funding before in your conversation with Vera, uh, it's hard to uh, find funding for the sort of things that we do. So we do the social enterprise, which is the eatery, and then the community space itself is funded by the eatery. Um, and it's a, a, a response to, uh, to we, we create this space for people who would otherwise find it hard to find physical spaces to do their arts, like certain political ideologies, certain um, sexual orientations and and whatnot. So that's um, that's what the space was created for right. uh, initially. Yeah. Well, it's so clever to take that entrepreneurial lens, right, and sort of to use the proceeds from a you know something that's very public and everybody's eating at you know they're and the food is good. To appeal. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What did you say? Sorry. And the food is good. <laughs> and the food is good. That's even better. That's even better. Oh well, thank you, thank you, Chika. Thanks for sharing. Um, uh, Benny, do you want to 
you want to share with us your your community work and challenges yes, definitely. successes yeah definitely so a, a lot of the work that i do on a personal level is to create bridges amongst the south and the north through my music so as you saw in, in the one dish um, video um, you know there's there's a collaboration between indigenous artists from north america indigenous artists from south america and many of my songs um they they're like this uh i, I was inspired by the eagle and condor prophecy which is a prophecy that has been passed down uh, by many nations which essentially says that at one point the condor representing the south and the eagle represented representing the north flew together but when colonization took place and land began to be divided the two birds went their separate ways and the calendars say that now we're in a time where the two birds are coming back together as the people of those territories begin to collectively awaken and return to their traditional ways of understanding their relationship with the land, with the stars, with their instruments, with their languages. So this prophecy has influenced a lot of my personal work, but in my community, um, it has also influenced the work that I do on a community level. So I began um, doing music, community, studio work, uh, about 15 years ago in different nonprofits that had, uh, you know, community studio spaces for artists that n didn't have the, the resources to, you know, to pay for studio time. So I began to run programs in these nonprofits, but I began to understand the dynamics of the community in, a, in first on a street level where there was uh, tensions between different neighborhoods, um, artists from the south of the community, uh, or just, you know, uh, tensions that had to do with with gangs from the south of the community and gangs from the north of the community that also uh, didn't allow many people to cross over, including artists. So there was that type of collaboration that wasn't happening. But also on, on an organizational level in terms of the nonprofits, there were issues uh, with maintaining space, so lack of funding, or there was, um, you know, job actions that took place in these organizations, and and uh, people were were let go unfairly because they tried to unionize and these type of things. So so community spaces did not last a long time. So then the idea to put together a mobile recording program, uh, you know, surfaced, and and this was sort of a response to all of this. And uh, so we put together a, a, in 2018 a mobile studio project and, and where space wasn't an issue anymore, we could really set up anywhere in any location. And in one day of the week, we go to the south side and record the artists that are there. On another day of the week, we go to the north side, record the artists there. And in the end, we put together collaborations that wouldn't have existed so that we are able to create these, these bridges with artists from a young age and begin to uh, get rid of this these barriers that have happened for so many generations and create actual um, relationships between between the artists. So I'm happy to say that even throughout the pandemic, we were able to maintain this, this project uh, virtually and I had put together a physical distance recording kit where I delivered the equipment to each uh, participant's house and we met online and showed them how to set it up. Um, and so, so we, we, right through the pandemic, we put together volume number two, volume number three, and now we're working on volume number four, which we'll be releasing in August. It's great, Benny. Thank you so much. What, that's just wonderful. Um, really appreciate your sharing. Thank you. <sighs> Kamika. And uh, here's what, here's what's happening to me too. I'm realizing that probably in all of your minds, you're like, yeah, wait, I have a follow-up question. Wait, I'd like to know more about that. Wait, what about this? And so so we're all going to hang out after this in case people want to exchange a few more questions. But um, but for now, Kamika, tell us tell us about, um, well, Musically Me is where I'm I'm thinking is most obvious to, to sure. orient, but yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, so in the more general sense, just thinking about my music and what that's looked like in the community. Um, I've been a community artist for the city of Dallas for I think about four years now. So that's allowed me to bring my artistic traditions into the community, performances, music, also different workshops that allow folks that otherwise wouldn't have access to music and the arts and also free of charge to them. 
uh, to be exposed and immersed in a variety of things. Um, I'm also board certified as a music therapist so that my heart and passion is really about people that maybe wouldn't otherwise be served to have access to things. So that has looked like bringing music therapy into a homeless recovery center and helping folks along that journey, as well as folks um, that have maybe cancer, folks with disabilities. So those were a lot of the things that I've been doing for the last decade plus, and then insert music to life and insert a variety of life experiences that helped me to understand and look at and reflect on the power of music in my life and the power of the ways I was able to use it in the community to connect people and to connect with people. And then the understanding um, and finally the research, it shouldn't take it, but finally the research that was able to back this understanding when it comes to black girls in particular, there's a term called um, adultification bias where the research literally showed in, in the US, black girls can be more severely, harshly punished than their non-black counterparts or their white counterparts for the same sorts of things in school settings. Um, they all uh, oftentimes can be objectified as well and seen as more adult, even though they're literally a, a girl, they're yo a young person, they can see, be seen as more of an adult and not in need of as much love and care of support of their same age peers. So that's part of, we don't have enough time to really dig into it, but the heart behind Musically Me Unlimited, I thought about how can I be of support through my, my music and artistry to people of color um, when we look at the disparities here in, in the US in terms of, of racism. And then when I look at intersectionality, not only race, but also gender and different things along those lines and how those compound to just mean that there's more struggle for equity. So I wanted to bring Musically Me Unlimited, uh, bring a lot of dope music, bring my background as a music therapist and say, this is for youth of color, but we're gonna start with black girls as an equity measure to give them free access to a program where they're not only immersed in music and expression and exploration through our model, but also coping skills, stress relieving skills, socio-emotional learning, but all through the power of getting together and creating music and taking them from wherever their artistic level is, whether they wanna be an artist or it's just gonna be, we all know on here, the power of the arts. Um, in our lives on a personal level, even if it might be a hobby for some and, and a profession for others, and providing a platform that culminates from 10 sessions to be a public performance, poetry, art, music, and the like. So a challenge has been funding, um, and a challenge has been finding the spaces and, and the bravery, too, to continue to speak what our truth of the truth of our experiences in a way that we shouldn't have to say, well, someone, a university did a study, so what we're saying is legitimate. So when I, when I have a program that's specific to a particular group, it's because there's been disparity in their access. So it's only equitable to open the door to folks who in some instances wouldn't have that access. So yeah. <laughs> I oh. could go on, but I'll pause there. <laughs> and she does, every one of you. I mean, I it's yeah, it's really thank you, Kanika. And and thanks to each of you. We may have lost Vera for a moment, but she might be she might be back in. I was actually gonna call even our bear if he's here. Oh, Vera's back. Good. And maybe get our bear on the screen. We're all gonna wave to <laughs> our audience um and 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 i just i guess what i would put out there is um first of all a huge thank you to all of you being here a thank you to everybody that has sort of shared this moment with us in all over the world wherever you are tuning in from and and just to encourage you if you've enjoyed the show we, we encourage you to share that appreciation um with your donations with your tips i think we've we've got that information in the chat. And I, I think Esme has a little QR code that she can put on the screen for us if she's if she's able, um, where you can just kind of get your phone in there and yeah, and uh, and that'll take you right to a to a donation page. But we really, we so appreciate um, all of you being here, appreciate your support. And we're gonna move into our encore. We've hit an hour, which is good. And so the encore takes us, takes us to to um, 
to enjoy some more of your music. And um, yeah, and then if you all can stay, we'll we'll hop back on after the after the encores for just a moment. Kamika, I think you've got somewhere to go, but if you're able to stay, please enjoy the rest of the music and just thank you all so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And thanks to yeah, thanks to this partnership. So thank you everyone. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, hey, hey, hey. Don't take it for granted. All the colors of your beautiful life. Don't take it for granted. When you go through hard times, it's life, it's love, and it's the blessings that come from above. Now is the time in this place to make a difference, to make that change. Knowing life is calling you Will you stand up and start anew Follow the beat of your heart Charting new territory God's ordained your destiny So step into your life And don't take it for granted All the colors of your beautiful life don't take it for granted when you go through hard times. Unite, spread love. Know that your blessings, they come from above. Now is the time in this place to make a difference, to make that change. Stepping into your season, everything is a reason. It's all a part of the plan. Uh, charting new territory, God's ordained your destiny. So step into your light and let it shine. Let it shine.
so I'm gonna give you my second song and this song is called End of the Road. Just a girl, but to me, girl. 